The following presentation of Take Paws has been made possible in part by Broward County Animal Care and Adoption, where you can adopt a new best friend for life. Often I like to joke that my own dogs have the easy life. They get to lie around all day and sleep while I'm off at work. But I hold no grudges, and believe me, either do my pets. <laughs> I tell you this though, when they do have the opportunity to run and play, it's no holds barred, and I wish I had half their energy. It's actually more natural for a dog to be on the go than it is for it to lie around most of the time. If you'd like to get your dog moving and keep his mind active and sharp, you might want to try agility training. Dog agility is a game that you play with your dog where you maneuver your dog through an obstacle course. And the obstacles can consist of jumps and tunnels and equipment like A-frames that your dog has to climb up and over. There are seesaws that the dog has to ride down, weave poles that the dogs have to maneuver in and out of. It's a really, really fun game and it's the most popular dog sport and the fastest growing dog sport right now. And the reasons that we recommend it to our clients so much is because it's, it's physically and mentally exhausting for the dog, which is a great thing for you, but it's also mentally challenging for the humans that run with their dogs because no two agility courses are ever the same. So it really provides a nice challenge. The techniques that we like to use while we're training dogs, we like to use luring the dog, which is just using your hand or your body with a little treat to get the dog to go where you want him to go. And then we also use catching or capturing the behavior. So we wait for a dog to offer something to us. So for example, if I'm working in agility and I want to teach a dog how to go over a jump, I could lure him, but I can also just stand next to the jump and I can wait for him to walk over the bar. And when he does that, I can reward him for it, okay? Or I can shape the behavior. So when I shape a behavior, I'll just break it down into smaller, smaller steps. So for example, teaching something like a dog to roll over, instead of trying to get him to roll over, I would first start by getting him to lay down and I would treat him for that and then lay on his side and I would treat him for that and then I would try to get him to go all the way over. So we have all of these different ways of getting him to do it, but we don't have to force a dog to do it. They don't like being forced, just like humans don't. Sometimes I have clients come in and they tell me something isn't working for them during their training. And when it comes down to it, it's usually because that person is not being consistent with their dog. If you are occasionally doing something with your dog, and then sometimes you're not, the dog doesn't understand when he's supposed to do it and when he shouldn't do something, okay? So consistency is key, and if you're consistent with your dog during the training process, your dog will learn what you want him to learn, and he will learn it quickly but consistency is key to that happening. Some of the benefits of training your dog include physical stimulation. Your dog is able to run around and you're challenging him with all of the different equipment. Sometimes he has to jump, sometimes he has to climb over something, um, sometimes he has to weave, um, and, and it's requiring him to move his body in all of these different ways, which for your dog, for flexibility, is awesome, and for muscle building is great as well. For puppies, it is mentally stimulating. You're really gonna wear your puppy out by doing agility with him safely, but it can really help wear your puppy out. 
and it also helps teach basic obedience. A lot of the exercises involve having the dog come to you, walking with you next to your side, having the dog sit, lay down, stay. So we do sneak a lot of obedience training into the agility as well. And then for older dogs, it is mentally stimulating too. We can actually increase your dog's lifespan by training them. So it's something that I highly recommend to keep older dogs active. And I highly recommend that you consult a professional trainer that understands and knows how to teach agility correctly because if it's not done the right way, you can actually end up hurting your dog or your dog might not be able to do the equipment that you want him to do. The amount of time and dedication necessary for training your dog depends on what you want to do with your dog. If you just want to work on basic obedience and teach him manners like not running out your front door and walking politely on the leash, things like that don't really take that long to teach, but it does require consistency. If you're not doing it on a regular basis with your dog, your dog cannot get good at it. What we tell people here at the Dog Training Academy is training is a lifetime commitment. Just like humans are always learning new things no matter what age we are, so are dogs. And dogs throughout their life will learn good things, but they're also going to pick up bad habits throughout their life. So training is necessary throughout your dog's life. Plus, it's mentally and physically exhausting for the dog, which is a bonus for you because now you have a very well-behaved, happy dog at home. If you'd like to help support Take Paws through sponsorship or by making a donation, call 754-321-1000 or go to beacon.tv.